Hey guys, welcome. Thanks for joining me today. This is Brad Krantz. Not tips for success today. You can see the background behind me. Facts tell, stories sell. So I want you to sit back and join me today. I'm going to tell my story. It's about overcoming doubt, loss, and self-limiting beliefs. And part of it's just about, it's about being real. It's about being authentic, sharing who I am, being vulnerable in hopes that some of you will relate, maybe not all of you, but maybe some of you are going through similar situations or have had similar backgrounds. But I want to share this today with you in kind of an abbreviated form. It's not going to be real long or lengthy, so um, you don't need to get a haircut or anything like that. But sit in with me. So just some of my background, I would, I would say I had a normal childhood. You know, I had two loving parents. You know, that's kind of odd maybe today, but I did. I wasn't a great student. I wasn't a great athlete. I would call myself average. Um, I never really had a great sense of maybe who I was as far as having a, a good self-image. You know, I kind of always doubted myself, and my abilities. I'm going to talk about a little bit about how that happened. But, um, you know, I was just, I was average. You know, I, I didn't stand out from the crowd at all. But, you know, pivotal event, I'm going to fast forward to uh, being 18 years old. My mom had been diagnosed in 19, gosh, 1972. She'd had surgery to remove a brain tumor. Came back, she went back to the Mayo Clinic. Had her tumor removed, and while she was recovering, she ended up having a stroke and spent about two years in a semi-vegetative state real close to where I live right now and ended up passing away in 1979 at 18. And that's something that sears in your memory. You never forget that, guys. You don't. And part of that is, how do you deal with that as an 18-year-old kid? That's not supposed to happen, right? Your mom and dad aren't supposed to die at a relatively young age. My mom was 47. But there's no manual really in how to deal with that. I didn't have a strong spiritual background in that. I, you know, I did the best I could. But really, what I ended up doing to, I think, to deal with that was get into drugs and alcohol to quite a large extent. I did spend about the next 10 years of my life involved in that. I'm not going to get involved in that story a whole bunch. But if you want to frame who I was then, would be probably watch the movies Animal House and Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Spicoli was modeled after me. Some humor there. Um, but dealing with that, um, you know, I was working in retail grocery, kind of got burned out on that, but what the, you know, fast forward now to age 25 and I knew I needed to make some changes in my life. I couldn't keep doing what I was doing. I knew it wasn't, you know, the path to success. I was, in fact, I was tired of it. I ultimately came, uh, through an outreach service, uh, locally to come and know and accept Jesus Christ as my personal savior. That was the probably single biggest positive event in my life that still impacts me and that's who I am that's part of my story but coming to know the Lord and what happened from that was literally less than a year later I met proposed to and was married to Joni who's now been my wife for what 34 years now so we got married in October 86 so I had a whole turnaround from 85 to 86 going from you know being drugs and alcohol to coming to know the Lord now I'm married with my wife working in retail grocery didn't like my job I was one of only uh, two employees out of 65 that had a college degree and realized I wasn't going to go anywhere. I could be doing this uh, effectively for the rest of my life. I didn't want to do that. So I quit cold turkey. Don't recommend doing that, especially when you don't have a good self-image and all that, but ended up getting in the insurance business. I won't tell that story today, but um, I'm going to kind of backtrack a little bit here, you know, about my dad. I, I want to say I love and respect him. He died of dementia back in 2012. That's a kind of an ugly, uh, not fun process to watch somebody go through. But um, he had a physical defect in his body, a handicap. You'd say he had a smaller and shorter left arm than his right. He had to deal with that. He was able to counter that. You know, he could do everything anybody else could do. A lot of it was one-handed, but it, it wasn't, it didn't limit him from doing most of life. You know, in fact, we built, I remember building a boat in 1975 in our backyard out of Woke and all that. My dad liked to sail. He didn't know how to swim, but he wanted to sail. We built a boat, worked out, floated, worked great. So he could do a lot of those things. But what happened, and I found out from my stepmom years later that my dad faced a lot of teasing. And I can imagine that as, you know, kids can be cruel. And I'll tell my little story here. Um, people teasing him about that. And I think that that really affected his self-image that he couldn't give what he didn't have. And I don't say this in any slight. My dad ended up uh, working the same company for 38 years uh, through wise and conservative investing. He basically became a first generation millionaire. 
Um, but you can't give what you don't have because my dad's self-image wasn't there. He couldn't pass it on to me and that I consequently have struggled for the majority of my adult life with that shortcoming, have overcome that. But, you know, you cannot give what you don't have. That's not a slight on the person. It's just if I don't have something, I can't give it to somebody else. I can't give it to my kids. But um, I still remember a story. I think it was between first and second grade. I still remember drinking fountain come out for break or whatever between class. And I still remember the guy's name, Mike Steele. I'd like to punch him today, but he made fun about my dad's arm. And that was not only a slight on my dad, but that cuts at your self-image because you're, you're being teased yourself. They call it bullying today. Back then, guys, it was just what it is. I didn't go curl up and crawl in a corner. You just deal with it. You move on. But I still remember that story today from about 1966 or 67. And that affects things. But um, through my jobs in insurance, you know, uh, district managers, I had a district manager that uh, told me I was a low producer. Well, guess what low producers do? They don't produce high, but never did he say, hey, let me help you. You're better than that. Let me show you how to get ahead. Let me show you how you can be a high producer. So I stuck with that, that programming that runs in your mind. You're a low producer. You're a low producer. You're a low producer. Again, I'd like to punch the guy today for saying that. Um, but that's that type of stuff, mental program goes in your mind. So through having jobs, bosses, district managers, company owners, people that basically were not leaders, I, I, that always baffled me how people could be in positions of responsibility and not have the first clue about leading. But it always made me feel lacking, uncertain, again, doubt, self-limiting belief, and basically feeling inferior uh, to other people. So that kind of frames some of my background. But fast forward now through uh, getting out of my insurance business, I uh, ended up a uh, short stint with a Fortune 50 company in management. And then with the last company, I worked with a 120 plus year old custom manufacturer and outside sales. 2018, January, I was diagnosed with cancer. That's scary. You get the C word. It's not somebody else, your friend, your relative, your mom, dad. It's you. You've got cancer. It turned out to be stage four prostate cancer. Uh, that was the toughest year that I faced. Excuse me. I'll tell you why. So I had over 40 doctor's appointments, bone CT scans. I think I had four bone and CT scans. I had a catheter in me for nine months. I'm not going to go into that, but when you have a catheter with a leg bag, that makes life a little bit challenging, especially when you get in and out of your car, sometimes up ladders and all this. Wasn't fun. Had terp surgery, finally corrected that. I'm doing good, but that is tough, getting cancer alone. Then I had a close aunt die in February. My sister delivered the eulogy. At her funeral, my sister had been dealing with cancer. It came back. She'd gone through chemo and it really just, you know, what chemo can do, it just kind of blows your body out, knocks down all your white blood cell count, your immune system. My sister ultimately ended up, my only sister, only sibling dying and watching her die of colon cancer in May of 2018. And then to top it off, my stepmom, who was 93, passed away about a month and a half later. That frames 2018 for me, guys. I'm still working outside sales 50 to 60 hours a week. I've got a job. I've got to do it. I've got to work. I've got to do these things. I didn't let that. My cancer diagnosis, losing my sister, my stepmom and all that take me down. Most people probably would have folded, guys, and they would have had good reason. But I'm just like, it's, life happens. You still got to go on. I have a responsibility to do what I'm doing. And that's my mindset, okay? I had so many people that you know, I look for an excuse not to go to job. Gosh, my car got so well, you go, go out and rent a car, right? You got rental car coverage. You, you do what you got to do. But I still hit 80% of my goal that year. And I don't say that to brag or anything, but that's just my work ethic. I never got praised or noted for that. I think I should have told me a little bit about the company I was working with, but nobody else in that company went through what I went through that year and still kept their job and hit 80% of their goal. So the writing's kind of on the wall, but I was told through working with a naturopath, I needed to reduce my stress level. Uh, I tried to talk to the company a couple of times about moving to an inside uh, position. I didn't really get a response there. I thought I'm not going to ask three times. So lo and behold, my wife and I were able to walk away from our jobs in February of 2019, basically two years ago. Um, so part of my story is, guys, due to the death of all my family members, I was left in a blessed financial situation. I'll leave it set at that. But I had to get up to speed in the world of attorney, CPA, certified financial planners. And some of this was not very pretty, guys. There's people that don't like you. There's people that want to put you back where you were, accuse you of all kinds of things. We got through that. That also wasn't very fun, uh, to be honest. But now I got to define what my life would be. So now what? Okay. 
I was left to make my own decisions, no second guessing or doubt. Nobody calling me a low producer. I get to define what my own life is. So how do I maximize my blessing? I was really resonated. The parable of the talents in Matthew 25 really resonated with me. You know, the people that get talents and three of them are praised or two of them are praised, one of them's not. I didn't want to be the wicked and faithful servant that was said, you know, you should have at least invested this with the bank, you know, earned interest on it, et cetera. I didn't want to do that. And that's me. Okay. I wanted to be hearing well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I'll make you rule over many things, guys. And that's been my mindset that not only being blessed, but what do I do with that? Do I just sit on it, take the rest of my life off? No, I can't do that. I have an opportunity. I'm going to talk about that here real quick. But the solution for me was really, it's, it's now or never, guys. Okay, I, I can't do my job anymore. I don't want to work for anymore. And I'll just be honest. It's my story. Idiot bosses, idiot district managers, idiot company owners, people that don't know what they're talking about. They don't know how to lead. I don't want to deal with that anymore at 59, 60 years old. I want to be my own boss. So now I get to believe in myself. Now I get to leave self-doubt and limiting beliefs behind, guys. So it's, it really came down to me when you're facing cancer, you watch your, your sister die, you're looking at your life saying, hey, what's important? Okay, do I want to still work in a job? No, I don't. What, what more can I do with my life? I don't know how much time I've got left. But I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Okay. And there's no dwelling in the past. People wanted to drag me back and accuse me of being this or that, or this is what you were, or you did this, or you got that. Guys, I, I told my wife, I'm not living in the past anymore. I'm, I'm not, I'm in 2019, I'm in 2020, now I'm in 2021. I'm living here and now. I'm not living about who I was, what I did, what I said, anything like that, guys. This is where I'm at today. And I'll tell you why. I've accepted, I have to accept who I am and what I have with no regrets and no apologies, but take the responsibility, take the mantle of leadership, and how do we go forward? I basically had to change my mindset. Yes, you can change your mindset. It doesn't matter what your age is, your background, your situation, circumstances, but you do need to change your mindset. I see so many people that are stuck because they can't change their mindset. They're broke, and they don't know how to stop being broke because they can't change their mindset. They won't change their mindset. So here I am, 60 years old, got stage four prostate cancer. I don't need to work. Enter Val Campbell, who I'm grateful for, and Adam, ultimately Adam and Ashley Reeker and 3LE came along. Guys, these people believed in me and empowered me like no one before. Guys, that's so, I can't tell you what that means. If you've never been empowered, if you've been beat down through your life, you need people to empower you. I want to be someone to empower you, okay, because you need to be empowered. You need people to believe in you. Okay, so I've taken up the mantle of leadership because it was so lacking in the last company I left. It was absolutely laughable won't go into that story, but there's so much lack of leadership out there. I said, you know what? I know enough about it. I'm going to educate myself. I'm going to start talking about leadership because it's so needed out there, guys. People don't want to follow non-leaders. And I didn't. I want to follow people that are leaders. Adam and Ashley are great testimonies to me in leadership, what they've gone through. Um, but I get to work. I want to work from home. I decided I can't go back out in the work world. I had many offers. I could have taken some up. I could have gone work for a competitor, which would have been fun. But I didn't want it that road trip. I drove all around Western Washington for 12 years. I don't want to do that. But why did I get in network marketing? Guys, I'm well aware. I've been in it two or three different opportunities. I'm well aware of the scoffers, the naysayers, the doubters, all that, guys. It's a legitimate industry, but I wasn't looking to get in something that was just run of the mill. I don't want to make any more lists of people. You know, my friends, family, relatives, I already burned through those in my previous opportunity. You can go watch the videos on that. But I needed something new. I wanted to build a business online. I knew when I got on LinkedIn, which is where I met Val Campbell, 2010, there had to be a way to monetize social media. I didn't know what it was because I really didn't understand social media, but I said there had to be a way. Lo and behold, again, Adam and Ashley Reeker. I knew it was possible. If I could leverage social media, I'm in, into it. I said there has to be a way to do it. I think they have a way. That's great. I wanted to help people, guys. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing this. I want to help people. I want to help empower people as a servant leader because it's so much needed out there. The work, the regular world just beats the crap out of you. And they tell you what you're not. They, they, they bring you down. I don't want to bring you down. I want to encourage you and uplift you. And hopefully my story, telling my story allows you, it does some of that for you. There's so much great financial need out there, guys. I was blessed, but I've seen it. We struggle. I mean, there's times where I couldn't buy a $20 pair of shoes. So I know what it's like. We went through bankruptcy because of previous business opportunity. I know what it's like to have a $50,000 tax lien and $40,000 of credit cards and you can't make those payments. And you know you'll never get out from under it. So I've been there. I've been through that pain. 
I know what it's like. It's not fun. When the IRS puts a lien on your account, you have no access to any of your money, guys. Not a fun situation. But we got over that. We moved on. Okay. So almost where we're at today, but you know, it, it took time to get there, guys. I had to learn a new skill. I had to learn social media. I spent the last year and a half learning how to be competent, learning how to engage with people in that. I to understand marketing in the 21st century. And we thought we were ready to go. Last year, 3LE, we have a, a system, a app. We have a system to build and grow business online to scale it globally with the company with that, which I said I knew I needed a global opportunity too. I don't have to go out and cold call people. But guess what? COVID-20 hit, right? Hit the whole world. The unexpected happened and knocked everybody's plans, come through everybody for a loop. We had to pivot. We did. I had to pivot. I did. Three things I learned, guys, this last year that are really important is you got to focus on your, your passion, your goal, or your vision. If you don't have any passion or goal or vision driving you, you won't do anything. There's no reason to. There's nothing driving you. It took a lot of patience, right? Being patient. We didn't know what 2020 just kind of threw us for a loop or feeling our way through it. We thought we had everything ready to go. We didn't. Uh, but it took patience. It took patience for us to be able to find the partner to develop the software we need for app, to find the partner to do our SEO digital marketing, a top guy, okay? So patience was required. And then persistence, persisting when we didn't see the results and we didn't get the results we wanted. We didn't know, you know, what's it gonna take to get there? So now here a year later, we persisted, we got through it and lo and behold, we're ready for 2021. We're ready to go with a market leading, I'd say industry, a unique in the industry, cutting edge business platform, leveraging social media with digital marketing with 3LE, okay? We have our system in place. We're ready to go now in 2021. So how do I feel about the future and why? I'm going to close with this, guys, but just, no, I'm optimistic as never before, right? Okay, I have hope for the future despite all the crap going on out there. I'm ready to scale globally with a 21st century company and opportunity, right? And I'm ready to provide leadership in online marketing because it's needed out there. I'm ready to grow. Yeah, you've got to keep growing. Personal development is still important. And big thing I learned, thank you, Calvin Basir, is to focus on winning or learning. I'm not winning or losing. I'm winning or learning, guys. Big thing there. So at 60, being able to realize my dream that I couldn't at 31 because guess what? I wasn't ready then. I didn't have the right opportunity. I had a pretty crappy opportunity. Um, my self-image was down. My belief in myself, all those self-limiting doubts and that. I couldn't do it, but now I can do it at 60, guys. So sometimes it takes the time. He's not right. It may take you 30 more years than you thought, okay? You give up and quit? No. Press forward. You go on. So realize it's okay to be a late bloomer, okay, guys? 60 years old. So now it's time to overcome my past, to overcome my doubts and my self-limiting beliefs, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you got something out of this. I really hope it added value to you. I hope you, you know, if you, you see yourself in these struggles, things, guys, reach out. I'd love to dialogue with you. I'd love to, to get your feedback. I'd love to help lead you forward. That's my goal is, again, to be a servant leader. Again, thanks so much for joining me today, guys. Appreciate it. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.